Welcome to the lesson Organizational Dimension of SDI. My name is Jorge Gustavo from Nini University. We already overview SDI in the previous lesson. Today we'll discuss SDI for, from their components. By the end of the lesson we'll be more familiar with SDI components and their role. There are key components common to every SDI. We divide those components in three categories. The ones relate to the formal organization of the SDI, that includes laws, policies, cost recovery models, and so on. The second category includes all components related to technology, from hardware to data. And then on the last category, we include the professionals and citizens that either are in charge of running SDI or using its resources in their activities. All around the world, governments are in charge of major infrastructure, such as road networks or public health. The same happens for spatial data infrastructures. Governments are active players and want to participate in the SDI development. Although SDI may have similar goals and overall purposes, each government will develop and design the SDI according to its needs and possibilities. By defining laws, policies and institutional arrangements, governments are shaping the SDI. In particular, the economic model chosen can shape the SDI. We all know how infrastructure like highways or education are expensive. Part of our taxes goes directly to support those infrastructures. The physical infrastructure takes years to build and many more years to be paid. So governments have to choose the economic model to support its development. Two different approaches can fall in two models. Open access model and cost recovery model. Let's discuss these two approaches. In the open access model, Government fully funds the agencies responsible for the spatial data collection and creation. The data can be accessed by anyone for free or for a small price to support the cost of distribution. Governments taking this model will recover the investment by stimulating the massive use of the data. Many more services and business are created and at the end more taxes are paid and the government recovers the initial investment in data. Using this approach also fosters the use of high quality data sets. The United States and Canada follow this open access model related to geospatial data. If the government opts for the cost recovery model, the users for the service 
who have to pay for it, to support its development maintenance. It is used, for example, for infrastructure like highways. Governments using this approach ask their own agencies to create business model to recover the money invested by selling geospatial data. Agencies are not fully supported by the government. Their costs have to be covered through their own through other means. This model is more frequent in European countries where governmental agencies are selling data. Hardware, software, networks and geospatial data all fall under the category of technology. We might think that infrastructure are independent of technology. But can we design a road network without thinking about the vehicles? Supporting electric vehicles, for example, does not have impact on the existing infrastructures? How about moving to 5G communication networks? The change has a huge impact on the existing infrastructure. So to plan and imagine, manage an STI, we must be aware of the current technology and its trends. Related to technology, we will discuss these components. Geoportals, data specifications, services and metadata. We are not covering all technology issues, but these are quite important in the scope of an SDI. Related to technology, we'll discuss two major components, geoportals and standards. Related to standards, we'll discuss data specifications, services and metadata. We are not covering all technology issues, but these are quite important in the scope of an SDI. Geoportals are the front doors to SDI. Goals are common to these portals, but its implementation and capabilities varies from SDI to SDI. It is worth to mention that in the beginning of SDI, the centralized repository for collecting metadata data and other resources was called Clearing House. You can follow the link provided to know more about Clearing House. The notion of web portal makes it easier to have these same resources distributed over a wide variety of sources providing the same centralized view of the available resources as the cleaning house. Some authors prefer to keep the term cleaning house for this specific type of geoportal that links all stakeholders and geospatial resources. Both cleaning house and geoportal can be used interchangeably. For those less familiar with geoportals, we suggest you to navigate for a few moments on these two examples provided. The first one is from Finland and the second from the United States. 
The exploration of more geo portals and its evaluation is left as an exercise for the reader. You can check the exercises for this lesson in your folder. Geoportals require a lot of effort to build and maintain, but in the end, users prefer to use generic search engines like Google or DuckDuckGo to search for information. In the resources section in SDI Papers and Presentation folder, we'll find a paper by Professor Ali Mansurian that discuss this problem and propose one solution based on expert systems. Standards are fundamental to achieve interoperability. To achieve interoperability, industry stakeholders must develop, implement or adopt existing technical standards that facilitate seamless exchange of geospatial data. Due to the lack of standards, in many countries we still have islands of information scattered across public agencies that cannot be used by everybody. Standards are necessary at all levels. We'll focus on data specifications, services, and metadata. Agreement on data specifications will maximize the interoperability of spatial data sets and services. Not everybody needs to use the same data specification. Different data specifications can coexist. If well defined, it is easy to transform them via services. Creating data specifications for all kinds of geographic features is almost impossible. In the scope of an SDI, only core features are considered. European Inspire Initiative has created data specifications for several themes aiming to create common representations for the most important geographic themes. The communication between applications, computer-to-computer -computer communication, is based on web services. To allow interoperability of web services, SDI must agree on the services used for discovery, view, download and transform geospatial data. The Open Geospatial Consortium, OGC, has developed standards for web services that are widely used in modern SDIs. The most important web services we will use in this course are catalog services for the web, web map service, web feature service. Later in this course, we will study these services with more detail. Metadata. Without a proper description about the data, it can have no meaning. This is particularly true for geospatial data. Geospatial data can be very complex. Geospatial datasets need very accurate and detailed explanations about the contents. Metadata is also valuable for searching. As an example, let's see which kind of metadata is used by the European Spatial Agency 
to describe the satellite images. When preparing and planning STI, people have to be considered. All laws, policies, agreements and technologies will fail if people do not become acquainted with the SDI concept. People are part of a large data infrastructure. They need basic knowledge to be able to search and discover relevant data sets, properly describe their data sets, provide their data sets to others, using web services, download services, etc. using proper formats. Users need to know the overall data workflow within the SDI. But the most important challenge is the change towards open access and cultural shift in data management, sharing and reuse. In this lesson, we reviewed the SDI concept from the perspective of its organization, governance, technology, and people. Two technology components were considered, geoportals and standards. Standards were discussed for data specifications, services, and metadata. People were also considered as an important component of SDI. Regarding people, we select the cultural change towards open data, culture, the most challenging transformation. Please look at the resource folder for additional literature. Two exercises are proposed to consolidate the concepts presented. Thank you so much for your interest and attention.